This is a Toro 3250D that we're currently using to cut tees. Upon doing our service checks in winter, I noted that the uh, the handbrake was sticking down and the actual pedal wasn't releasing properly. This had also been noted by one of the lads that had been using it. After further investigation, I found that the left-hand side wheel rim was becoming warm during use, which indicated to me that there is a fault within the wheel hub. After a quick visual check, it was clear that the linkages on the left-hand wheel weren't working as they should be. Here it shows the pedal stuck in the downward position, which is causing the brakes to bind. I then decided the only way to investigate this problem further was to strip down the hub. First I swept out the workshop and give it a quick tidy up. I then sorted an area out for putting all of the parts that I was about to strip off. I then cracked the wheel nuts off and raised and supported the vehicle on axle stands, removed the key and made the vehicle secure. I first removed the wheel and took the spacers off. The next thing that needed to be removed is the big nut that holds the wheel hub on. There are better ways of getting the hub nut off but as I was working on my own with only limited tools this was the best option. Note I put the wheel nuts back on to avoid damaging the threads and then used one spanner to jam the hub while I loosened the hub nut. Another way of doing this would be to get somebody to stand on the brakes if they were functioning properly. This way that would stop the hub and you would be able to slam the nut. Here's a close up of how I got the nut off. It seems a bit crude but it did the trick and worked, worked a treat. Here I am removing the nut. The hub should now just come off. The hub is still tight so I tried hitting the hub with a hammer and rotating it to try and loosen it off. As the hub still didn't want to come off I thought I would use a hub puller and this is one. To use a hub puller first you put it on where the wheel would normally go. It varies from different vehicles. This is actually a Volkswagen hub puller but it fitted over two of the wheel nuts which I tightened down with the ratchet. Once the pour is secured with the nuts you turn the middle section and it will extract the hub off the machine all being well. This is the hub removed from the vehicle with the puller. Now the hub is removed I could see what the problem was. The brake pads had actually become detached from the shoes and were jammed in. This is probably why the hub would not come off very easily. You can see here the brake shoes with no pads on them. Here you can see there is no pads left on the shoes. This is a picture of the old shoes and the pads that had become detached once I'd removed them from the machine. This is the bare hub which is in need of a bit of a clean up. I gave the hub a clean up with a wire brush to get rid of all the loose rust and dirt. Whenever you're cleaning up anything to do with brakes it's a good idea to wear a mask as brake dust can be harmful. I also prefer to use barrier cream on my hands rather than the latex gloves. This protects your skin from oil and dirt getting into them. Also, glasses are a good idea when wire brushing, just in case anything flies off into your eyes. Once cleaned up, I blew the air off with the airline just to get any last bits of dirt off them. Once I knew the machine required new brakes, I found the parts manual and had a look to see if I could find some part numbers. This is the exploded diagram of the wheels and brakes assembly from the machine in question. You can clearly see labelled for is the brake shoes and the two springs used to attach them. Here you can see under number 4 it says brake assembly 2 because there's two shoes and it gives you the part number which I then rang my local Toro dealer and gave them the part number. 
When I rung our local Toro dealer that's only a few miles away, they had the parts in question in stock and on the shelf, so I popped down, picked them up so I could get on with the job. Next I put some copper grease on all the places where metal would touch metal. Copper grease is ideal for this as it does not damage the brakes in any way and it will lubricate the area so it's easier for dismantling if it ever needs to be again. I assembled the new brakes with the springs on the floor ready for refitting to the machine. Here I'm refitting the brake shoes, sometimes this can be quite tricky because of the springs. The easiest way is to assemble the springs first and then try and manoeuvre the brake pads into position. Sometimes two hands is not quite enough so I put my foot on one side of the brake shoe so I could pull the other side on and clip them into position. Here the new brake shoes and springs are all in place, ready for the hub to be reassembled. I put some copper grease on the main shaft just to lubricate it so the hub would slip on a lot more easy. On inspecting the hub prior to refitting it was a little bit corroded inside. Here I'm just giving the hub a quick clean up with some sandpaper as it was quite corroded inside. This will aid refitting and make the brakes work better. Before refitting the hub I slackened all the adjusters off so that the brake shoes was in as far in a position as they could be so the hub will slip on more easily. Here I'm refitting the hub making sure to line the keyway up in the correct position. The hub then just slips back on. Here the hub is back in the correct position, ready for the nut to be put back on. Here I screw the nut back on by hand as to make sure I don't cross thread it. Once the nut is hand tight I use the spanners to tighten it up properly. In normal circumstances the nut should be torqued up to a certain amount of pressure but as we don't have a torque wrench I've just done it by hand. I then noticed there is a hole right through the shaft of the hub which normally would have a split pin in although there was not one present when I dismantled the mower. I decided to put one in just for safety. You can see the split pin I've put through here it will just stop the nut from coming off should it become loose. I then refitted the spacer back onto the machine. I then refitted the wheel and tyre back on. Upon doing the nuts up, I've done them finger tight as I always do to make sure I don't get them cross threaded. Once as tight as I can do them by hand, I then tighten them up with the ratchet, making sure to always do opposites first, as so the wheel goes on evenly. I then lowered the vehicle back to the ground and tightened the nuts up properly with a bar, as you shouldn't really use a ratchet to tighten things up as it strains the mechanism. It's always best to replace brakes in pairs, so I decided to do the other side while I was on with the job. The other side was a bit more tricky. You have to remove the hydraulic motor from the centre unit to enable you to get a jack and axle stands underneath the machine to secure it. With the centre motor removed, I could then get the jack underneath to raise the machine. Here are the old set of brakes against the new set of brakes and all the other parts I've removed. Notice I've put them all out in order so they're clearly visible and cannot be lost on the floor. Completing the other side brake changeover is exactly the same as the other side one.
I then stripped down all the linkages, cleaned all the threads up and lubricated them, refitted them back on and adjusted them until the brakes were working sufficiently. Here you can see the adjustment for the brakes. I took these down, cleaned them, refitted and adjusted them until the brakes were working properly. I then took it outside, road tested it up and down the yard to make sure the vehicle pulled up in a straight line and the brakes were no longer binding. When all was well and adjustment was done properly, the parking brake also started working again properly. I then put the machine away, filled in the service book as I do with any repair that I make, writing down the date, what the job was and usually put the part numbers as well just for future reference. I then completed the rest of the winter service for the machine and all was okay.